Fishing the Wild West TV with Wes David is brought to you by Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest, Adventure Destination International. Book your trip of a lifetime with Adventure Destination International in Thompson's Resort, along with Cam Clark Ford, the official vehicle of Fishing the Wild West TV. Wow, <laughs> You're getting a little western on the deck. This week's episode of Fish in the Wild West TV, we're with Dan Davies with Big Sky Jigs. We're on Rolling Hills Reservoir and we're going to do some jigging and bottom bouncing with all Big Sky tackle. Big walleye holding this reservoir, but first we're going to set a few crayfish traps. We're going to set them out now, come back at the end of the day, and hopefully they're full. Yeah, that's right. Let's get on with it. Got one on. We've been picking up pike. So hopefully this is a walleye. It's got head shakes like a walleye. Yep. First walleye, we're fishing here with Dan Davies, Big Sky Jigs, which is well known for his jigs. But just recently, how long have you been tying your bottom bouncing baits, Dan? Uh, uh, two seasons now. Two, two full fishing seasons? Yeah, two full fishing seasons. So you can... Uh, one stop shopping with you, you can stop, pick up your baits or your bot, your jigs. And then he's got these bottom bouncers now, which have been working great. We'll show them to you here in a second. We'll get this walleye back in the water. Nice little walleye. But here's, so again, Dan's well known for his jigs, been tying jigs throughout five, Canada. Five years now, yeah. Five years, you get the a wide variety of jigs, yeah. but now you're tying your own bottom bouncers, yeah. and you got kind of a unique story with the bottom bouncers. You uh, you hire a lot of school kids, give them summer jobs. Yeah, it's yeah. We originally we had a young kid in Medicine Hat wanted to make some extra money, loves fishing, so we said here, we gave him 1,600 bouncers to tie up or har harnesses to tie up, and he went to town. And here's just a few of them. So yeah, so when you. Uh, order your next batch of jigs, pick up some bottom bouncing harnesses too and keep that young fellow employed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he will love it. Dan's on. I just hit anchor, Dan. Hang on, I'll give you a hand. Okay. Get set up. Ego net, I can reach out. That's right. It's the same net we have, and they're amazing. They are a great they net. They reach forever. I haven't seen them. Have you seen them? No. He's coming there up. There he is. Perfect. On your awesome. own harness. That's right. Got to make sure they work. Oh, look at that. Pretty pink. Pretty pink harness. And smiley face. Double hook. And why do you run double hooks or why do you tie the double hook? That's for night crawlers? For night, yeah, night crawlers or some guys use minnows that way. So, for sure. Excellent. Lots of guys run plastics, same thing. Yeah, so I'm running big bite baits over here. Yeah. Um, disc worm, that two hook sets up nice. You're oh, running sure. two leeches over here. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's get some more. Sounds good. Okay, so we're going with the wind, I just hit spot lock, so odds are high. The boat's gonna turn into the wind, so I gotta be careful here I don't run myself over. <laughs> okay. Dan's bottom bouncers. Yes, sir. Big sky bottom bouncers. Another decent one. Excellent. So yeah, that's a, it's a getting bigger. And there's no rhyme to reason where they are. This we're out deep now. Find that other hook. Put this down. Pull that out, Dan. <laughs> there. Get the pliers. Where are they? Use these ones. There. Another decent walleye, but they yeah. get much bigger. Yeah, that's average for sure. That's a nice one. Again, so I'm just using Big Sky uh, blades, bottom bouncing blades, 
two hook. I've got a disc worm on here, four inch disc worm from Big Bite Baits. And we're just going along. They're 14 feet of water out to 22 feet of water is yep. what we just caught that one in. And it's a cloud cover day here. We're, we come out, it's supposed to be nice. And of course, I'm gonna say it on TV. The weatherman was 100% <laughs> wrong. Yeah. We've went through a monsoon getting here, <laughs> got on the water and fished the rain. Now it's cleared up a little bit, but over there is not looking too pretty. No. We catch some fish while we can. <laughs> This segment has been brought to you by Steel Shad Lures, any fish, any depth, any season, and Power Pole, total boat control. Closed captioning is brought to you by Buzz Bomb Tackle, iconic sonic fishing lures made in North America for over 50 years. All right, fish on. Super shallow again, Wes. 16, but probably right where you're at is Eight or nine. Yeah, it's big girl, you need the net? No, that's all right. Need a hand? No, that's all right. We got it for you, bud. Perfect. Just a nice small guy. Quick release. Excellent. So all we've done, we found them, <laughs> located them bottom bouncing. Now we're gonna set up, or we just set up to jig them. I think Dan, you just got down. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. You you have a jig for every scenario <laughs> there's, yeah there's not a jig we don't make what scenario we can't uh, make it work for we do everything from like 180th ounce to like 30 ounce halibut jigs it's it's just crazy huh? and you also do custom yeah you do custom jigs yeah we sure do so if you had a company you want your logo on there or whatever yeah yeah we do they're all hand done so they're all unique um, everything it works really good. The custom side's really nice because you can do anything you want. If you're, um, you know, like what we're doing now, we're fishing shallow, so we'll go a little lighter head, no wind, but we want a big hook, so things like that. So you'll interchange your hooks with your jig heads? Yeah. And even when I said custom, like it's not only put a logo on there, you can, if an angler has a pattern that they really want, oh, you yeah. can. We have, a, we have a vault, we call it, of all our custom patterns we do. Some of those great grandfather patterns worked and <laughs> they, they can't get it any more discontinued. So they send us a picture, or send us the jig and say, we need these made. So we do our best. Awesome, so, awesome. It's a lot of fun. Big Sky Jigs, you want them customized, this guy can do it. <laughs> I just tied on a new four inch disc worm and got a decent walleye here. You gonna help me, Dan? I'll help oh, you. That's so nice of I'm you. I'm a nice guy today. And I cast that one out and popping it back to me. Yeah. You left your rod in, didn't you, Dan? You keep looking over there. I did. Well, <laughs> that happened quick. <laughs> that was that was crazy how quick that was. So let's get this out. Okay. Got the net. Get my stinger hook out. Here, just set this down. Decent, like the big sky jig hanging out. Four inch disc worm from Big Bite Baits. Decent walleye, getting back in the water. Like that barely hit the ground, Wes. Barely hit the ground. It was in, just started, I think it was the first pop back. It may have fell on his head. <laughs> Get back wow. out there. There was no bite. There was just the weight of the fish. It's turning nice. I get to take my bibs off maybe, Dan. Put on my new Big Sky jersey. That's right. Oh my God, I'll feel amazing. Now that we fish through the monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> well. Gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. You got a jack or a big walleye? Oh, it's a walleye. Big one? Well, no, but a nice one. He hit like a freight train though, moving. We were just moving shallower and you left your jig in the water. <laughs> That's right. Crushed it. 
You're on your own, Dan. I'm going fishing. There we go. Beauty. Nice fish. That time, Wes, I just pitched it out this time. Yeah, I just pitched out. Now I've got to reel in to help you. Uh-oh. I think I have a real fish too, Wes. Got a gooder? Oh. They're all yes, good. Yes, they're all good. Some just are a little more exciting than others. Don't lose them. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I believe last time I was in the boat with you, I just fell out. We don't need to, we don't need a repeat. <laughs> that is a good, oh, Perry, spit it right out. Look you get that. your leech back. That is a nice fish. Well, you're holding them. <laughs> I'll get another one. Dan's fishing, I'm holding them. <laughs> Down to the bottom he goes. That's the great thing about a catch and release reservoir, which this one, Rolling Hills, is yep. catch and release. Um, a lot of the southern reservoirs are catch and release, so there's a lot of fish. So it's a great place to bring your family. You want to get kids hooked on fishing? Stop here. Yeah, that's great. This segment has been brought to you by Hooked Magazine, Hooked on Fishing in the Great Outdoors, and Lucky Bug Lures. Get hooked on Lucky Bug Lures. Welcome back to Fishing the Wild West TV. Casting it out, dragging it on the bottom. And it's funny because just 15 minutes ago, they quit biting on the bottom bouncer. That's right. But yet they still want it moving. That's, again, they will let you know. Isn't that the one you just lost? Probably. Good fisherman can catch the same Isn't that... fish twice. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why is Dan on your side of the boat, Wes? Pardon? Why is Dan on your side? I don't know, because as soon as I start, I was catching him over here, all of a sudden, Dan's in my pocket. I move to this side of the boat, Dan's in my pocket. It's all part of the babysitting process. Wild Cookhouse is brought to you by Wild West Seasonings, home of award-winning seasonings, marinades, brines, and batters. The southern reservoirs have, have been infected by crayfish. The great thing is walleye, pike will eat them, but they are an invasive species. So anglers can take part in it by catching them. And it's something you can see the results right away. So you're catching them, you're taking them out of your water body. We're gonna put them in the live well. You've gotta clean them, um, kill them and clean them. You cannot transport them live anywhere. So we're gonna go clean them. We're gonna, there's people fishing in the area, so we're not doing it right here. We'll maybe go over to the Seagull Island, throw them there, and then we're gonna cook them up tonight. So it's conservation at its finest, and you get to see the results immediately. We got fresh crawfish. Chuck is going to walk us through an incredible chowder using the crawfish that we just harvested. And this is a chowder recipe that I've used many times over the years, so it's pretty versatile. We've done it with smoked chicken, we've done it with halibut, other types of seafood, even smoked lake trout. So I think it's a perfect opportunity to utilize the crayfish that we just harvested today. So how we're going to start here is we've just heated the pan up with a little bit of butter, and we're going to get some of our vegetables sautéing here. So we're going to start with the carrots first. the onions, and the celery. Okay, so now that these have softened up a little bit, you can see they sweated down a little bit. We're gonna add our garlic next. And you wanna add your garlic at this stage for probably 30 seconds to a minute, because once again, you don't wanna burn the garlic. And you don't want any color on this, you just wanna sweat everything down so the flavors start to melt together. And this is how we're going to get that thick and creamy chowder texture. So we're going to start off with about three tablespoons of butter. Melt that down a little bit. I'm going to put three tablespoons of flour in there. And just sprinkle it around a little bit. It might start to stick a little bit, but it'll loosen up. So 
today we're going to use chicken broth. And once you add that, then start stirring and you'll see it starting to thicken up from the flour and butter mixture. So bring it back up to a simmer and you'll see it thicken up as soon as it gets hot. Okay, so now that we've got our liquids in there, we're going to put our main spices in. So what we're going to use today is our favorite Cajun seasoning from Wild West Seasonings. So this is very versatile. We use this on fish, poultry, beef, game. It works on everything. So if you want a little Cajun kick to your product, add this. It's, it's beautiful. We're going to add our potatoes next. And now we're going to get to the creaminess of a chowder. So you can use cream, you can use milk. Right now we're going to use milk. It's going to be thick enough for, for us. And you can even finish it off with a little bit of cream at the end if you want it a little more creamier. Crayfish that we just harvested today. So these have been blanched already, so they're pretty much cooked all the way through, but we're going to let this simmer for about another 5 or 10 minutes, finish it off with a little fresh dill, and then we'll be eating it. The next time you're fishing a water body that's got crayfish, set a few traps. And the next time you want to spice up your meal, check out Wild West Seasonings. That's good eating. This segment has been brought to you by Lynn Thompson Lures, Canadian made for over 90 years, and Rock Guard, protect your investment. This segment is brought to you by Big Sky Flies and Jigs, tackle you can trust, and Tourism Saskatchewan. Start planning your visit today. There we go, Wes. You gotta sit oh. down and let your rod sit. <laughs> Real. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Um, that was really strategic. I had my rod sitting at the right angle, I guess. I don't know. That's a nice fish, too. Yeah. You should get a bunch of these big sky jigs, Dan. They're amazing. I uh, I will order some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> order some from Alicia. <laughs> order some from Alicia. <laughs> nice catch. This is her actually this is her favorite jig. So, <laughs> and what? Let's see that's it. The favorite knockout jig. Knockout jig. Yeah. What's the color pattern? It's a perch pattern knockout. It is her favorite. It glows in the dark. I mean, like we've caught how many fish today? The hooks on these ones are super, super strong. And you're just tipping it with a leech, and that one you're literally sitting it on the bottom. I was up a foot because there's that weeds I kept pulling up. Oh yeah. I, now I told you my secret. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Darn. <laughs> I set it down to come <laughs> net your fish. This gear talk is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Let's talk a little bit about what we did today. And we did a lot. There was five or six different techniques that we had to change up to the conditions. First, we started out, which a lot of walleye anglers do, bottom bouncing, until we located fish. We used a two ounce bouncer. Color's not important to me, but it was a two ounce bouncer behind a big sky bottom bouncer, the blades that they used, a smiley blade, a variety of colors. There was no one color that stood out from the rest. But one little unique tip on there was the floatable little beads. Kept it off the bottom because we did have some, some weed issue, so that float helped us. We, we bounced uh, live leeches or the four inch disc worm from Big Bite Baits. Once we found them, we'd set up again and then start jigging them. Now, Dan has a variety of jigs. And you don't want to get hung up on one color. If pink worked here today, it might not work at a different lake tomorrow. You might want a purple or a green. It might not even work on a different location on the lake. So you want a wide variety of colors, weights, and different styles. And there was no one style that worked better than the other today. We tipped that again with a four inch disc worm from Big Bite Baits or live leeches were working. We would bottom bounce, they turned off. We set up and jigged them, vertical jigged them. They wanted it still. Then all of a sudden they wanted it moving. But these are all things that Dan and I had keyed into throughout the day, paid attention to, and consistently caught fish. Try a couple of these tips and techniques the next time you go fishing, regardless of the lake you're fishing on, and I hope you land one more walleye.
Oh, this one feels a little weight. Now again, we just come from fishing nine feet of water. Now we're fishing 18 feet of water. This Would is a like great walleye, yeah. Ooh. Thanks, Dan. That's a great walleye. He come up with six inks. Think he's 60 centimeters? 60, I bet you 67. 67? Yeah. Where's your bump board? That's a great walleye. Spawned out female. I'm just going to hold you to it. Yep. What did you say? 67? 67 centimeters. Here's my big sky jigs measuring stick. Oh, 68. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice walleye. We'll get her back in the water. So I'm out one centimeter. There she goes, nice small, uh, spawned out walleye. Like she was a little bit skinny. You can tell she's, she's went through the spawns and now she's just ready to feed. This is a great walleye. Well, that's this week's episode of Fish in the Wild West TV. Dan, I want to thank you for taking us out on your home lake, letting us use and lose some of your quality <laughs> gear, <laughs> that's right. and showing us another lake. Um, if you want quality products, Give Big Sky Jigs a call. They'll set you up with bottom bouncers, jigs, rulers, everything you need. I'm your host, Wes David, Dan Davies, Big Sky Jigs. Another episode of Fish in the Wild West TV. So I let them have it real to them and then pick it up. There we go. Of course, on my side of the boat. <laughs> no, no, my side. From here back is my side. <laughs> Yeah, front I back used to have the whole boat. You got me fishing down a hallway now. Yeah, I'll move back a bit. That? <laughs> yeah, that's way better. Follow us on social media or at fishingthewildwesttv.com.